y'all. So tomorrow is a big Democratic debate down in Charleston, South Carolina. The stakes are huge for this debate tomorrow because this is the last time voters will hear from these candidates on that debate stage prior to going to the polls on Saturday in South Carolina, as well as going to the polls on Super Tuesday. There are going to be 14 states plus two additional contests on Super Tuesday. So it's do or die time, okay? These candidates cannot fuck up on this debate. And this is the last chance to take somebody else down. Okay, all this punching sideways, some people need to be punching up. So I have a debate preview for you guys. My thoughts on what I think people should be doing, my educated guesses, I won't say predictions, but my educated guesses on what I think people will do, as well as break down some of these polls that came out today. I'm expecting a lot of spin to come out of South Carolina. So I'm going to pre-spin for you so you can know what to look out for. And we'll see how these polls hold up before and after the debate and the actual results. So first two minutes on Twitter, then you can follow me over to YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. It's not that hard. So let's get started. There were two polls that came out today. Quite different results in terms of the spreads for Joe Biden. Um... Both polls, though, did have Joe Biden in the lead. But let me break down some of the more um, intricate details. So let's let's first start off with the better news. I know that you Biden people want some good news. So I will throw y'all a bone. And I'll start off with the public policy polling poll, okay? So that poll came out today. It was the polling time frame was February 23rd through February 24th, okay? And this had 866 likely Democratic primary voters. So the overall polling results for that is that Joe Biden is in the lead with 36%. That's good news for Joe. Bernie Sanders is quite a bit a ways behind at 21%. Then you have Elizabeth Warren in third place with 8%. Buttigieg and Steyer are both at 7%. Tosa Gabbard is at 6%. Amy Klobuchar is at 3%. Now, when you break down the vote by Black voters, Biden has a commanding lead, 50%. Bernie Sanders has 12%. Tom Steyer and Tosa Gabbard actually have 6% each. Buttigieg and Warren have 2%. Amy has 1%. So that's what you have with the Black voters. Let me get to the white voters, and then I'll talk about the spin. So the white voters, I don't have all the data because public policy just had a paragraph. They didn't have the, break, the full breakdown. But what it says here is that Joe Biden has 20% of the black voters. Bernie Sanders has 22%. So Bernie Sanders is ahead with 22% of, of white voters. Biden right behind him with 20%. Then you have Buttigieg and Warren both pulling in 15%. I don't know what Amy Klobuchar was there or Tom Steyer. That wasn't in the public policy release. So... This is where the spin comes in, guys. Now, I've been warning you guys that there's a very high probability, and I say this with absolutely no desire for this to happen and no, um, no, I, I don't take any pleasure in saying this. But the likelihood of this being dismissed as the black state is very high. And I'm just going based off of history, right? In 2016, what did Bernie Sanders do? He kind of poo-pooed the Southern states, right? And it was like, oh, it's the black states. So I can win white voters. So having the racial breakdown and the other poll um, has different results, but let's just talk about this public police policy polling results. When you have uh, Joe Biden at 50% of the black vote, then you have Joe Biden who was like bear hood. Barack Obama, President Obama. Jail. Noun verb Obama. Biden, Biden today actually has out an ad attacking Bernie Sanders. It's about time. But his ad is, again, about Barack Obama, President Obama, and talking about how Bernie Sanders wanted to primary President Obama. I would kind of think that the people in the Sanders camp probably aren't the biggest Obama supporters. And the people that actually are very much persuaded by Obama are probably already in the Biden support. So I don't know how persuasive that's going to be. I personally just like to see some kind of something, just some kind of effort. I've been saying, Joe, what the fuck? I don't even, I don't even support anybody to be clear. I'm, I'm neutral, but damn, I don't like Bernie. So the last thing I want to do is see Bernie watch his fucking ass to the nomination. So anyway, so, so, you know, what is the spin? Pre-spin might be premature, but I'm going to give you the scenario. The pre-spin is that, well, 
Joe Biden was Obama's VP. Black people love Obama. Of course, Joe Biden is going to win the black vote. Joe Biden has always led with the black vote. Nobody was going to be able to take the black vote again from Joe Biden. That's what people are going to say. Guarantee it. But then you have these little white vote numbers. The white vote is a much closer picture. So what do you expect? The people who got blown the fuck out, no delegates most likely for some of these people, to say about the results. They're going to parse it and they're going to say, well, you know, maybe they won't say this themselves, but trust me, their surrogates is going to find a way to put it in, especially on Twitter jail. Well, when you look at the white vote, it was much closer. Joe Bernie Sanders won the white vote in the South. Joe Biden was slightly behind. Buttigieg and Warren, well, I would have been viable if it was only white voters. I'm not saying they have the stupidity to say that themselves, but do I think that they're going to telegraph that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the pre-spin that I'm going to see. Well, I mean, look at just white voters. Don't pay attention to the black voters. It's close. Wasn't that bad. Now, I don't know what the fuck, Amy, where she fits in with that. So she might not have nothing. She might just be like, yeah, I don't even see South Carolina. At any rate, that's my educated guess. I'm not going to say a prediction, but that's my educated guess based on history, Jam. An interesting um, tidbit, though, out of this public policy thing. Now, you guys asked me or you guys brought up the fact that Republicans were going to be meddling in the Democratic primary and, you know, oh, my God, is that going to skew the results? The answer appears to be no, at least based on what the data is telling us. This is all polling data. It's not to say that this is what's going to happen. It's just instructive. I say it's not predictive. It's instructive. OK, well, so about 13 percent of Republicans are planning to participate in the Democratic primary. That's according to public policy. Polling. Now, when I look at each candidate's support, um, I have the data in front of me. You can download this data as well from public policy polling. Um, what's interesting is that um, when it comes to how their support is distributed, what makes up their support, um, for Joe Biden, um, he has 36% total. 42% of that comes from the Democratic. Um, so out of the distribution, right, for um, for um, each each party, right? So of the of the of the of the Democrats, forty two percent of the Democrats pick Joe Biden. Of the Republicans voting, eighteen percent pick Joe Biden, and of the Independents, twenty three percent pick Joe Biden. Okay, so that's a nice chunk. Now, um, the next, the actual highest chunk of Republicans, unsurprisingly, right, is for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is getting twenty two percent of the Republicans voting. And 27% of the of the independents voting. But I don't think that those margins are huge. Now, if you have a really, really close result, oh, people will be howling, howling if Republicans are, you know, several percentage points higher than um for one candidate versus another versus another. But again, they're gonna be they're gonna be like 13, 14% of the overall primary electorate that's voting, because it is an open primary. The funniest thing, though, is that Tulsi Gabbard is at 6% overall in this poll. Of the Democrats, 1% of the Democrats support her. But of the Republicans, 10% support her. And of the independents, 17%. So she's in third place in terms of support from um, independents. She's in four. Oh, actually, she's not that high in terms of. In terms of um, Republicans, Republicans are split between um, 12% is going to Pete Buttigieg, which is higher than Tulsi Gabbard support, 9% Amy Klobuchar, 12% um, Tom Steyer, and then Tulsi Gabbard. So the Republicans are spreading the the love jam, okay? Elizabeth Warren is actually performing the worst with Republicans getting only 3% of that vote. So these are some, some tidbits of information. Um, are people going to yell like rigged Republicans, you know, interference, of course, if they don't get the results that they want. But I don't think that you can make a persuasive case 
that these people are skewing the results much further than what they would be because they're, like I said, they're spreading the love around. So that's the good news for the Biden folks. Don't say I never deliver good news because I do. I try to. I I, I I shouldn't say I try to. Look, I just gave y'all the news. Yeah, I gave you the data. You can like my opinion, not like my opinion, but you have the data to formulate your own conclusion. But I'm leading off with better news. Now, the rest. We had another poll that came out today. This is from NBC News, Mars poll. This is a South Carolina poll. The data was from, the, the polling period was between February 18th and February 21st. So this was pre-Nevada caucuses, but pre and after the Nevada debate. They were very helpful in giving us a breakdown as to what the numbers look like before and after the debate to see what kind of impact the debate performance, presumably the debate performance is what had the impact, right? So let's start pre-debate. Prior to the debate, Joe Biden had a 10-point lead on Bernie Sanders. It was 29% for Joe Biden, 19% for Bernie Sanders, 14% for Tom Steyer. So that's third place. Pete Buttigieg was in fourth place with 9%. Elizabeth Warren, 6%. Amy Klobuchar, 5%. 11% undecided. That was pre-debate. Post-debate. After the Nevada debate, Joe Biden dropped four points to 25%. Bernie Sanders rose six points to 25%. So now they're tied. 25 and 25, just after the debate. Tom Steyer rose a point, 15%. He wasn't on the debate stage. So nobody got any digs in on him. Pete Buttigieg, neutral. 9% before, 9% after. Elizabeth Warren came up 10 per to 10%. So that's a four point jump for her. And um, Amy Klobuchar dropped a point to 4%. The undecideds dropped to 7%. Okay, so that's a 4% drop in undecideds. One could probably logically make the argument that that undecided vote moved to Elizabeth Warren. That's the exact amount of her increase. Um Maybe, Amy, I mean, listen, I don't know how these people moved from before and after debate, but I'm just looking at them. I'm just doing simple math here. But uh, Tom Sire went up by one, Amy went, by by, went down by one. Maybe Amy, Tom Sire people have some overlap. Who knows? Um, But, you know, Joe Biden, he got... He got, he, he got, he got, you know, he got a pretty, he got a 4% drop, but that 4% drop plus Bernie 6% drop, kind of a big deal. If Bernie Sanders manages to close this gap, that's going to be a problem for Joe. Do I think that that's going to happen? I'm not making a prediction, but I think that Joe does have some things working in his favor. Now, so people are speculating that Jim Clyburn is going to make an endorsement of Joe Biden. I, you know, maybe that Clyburn machine would really help. I kind of would think that that would be baked in a little bit. I don't think that people are thinking, oh, Jim Clyburn wouldn't support Joe Biden. So, but you know, if you wanted to be optimistic, if you wanted to say, no, 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 I don't think that Joe Biden is going to lose because of X, Y, and Z that's going to happen. That's going to put him back ahead of Bernie Sanders. That would be one of the things that you would, you would think about, right? Maybe Jim Clyburn's, uh, Congressman Jim Clyburn's, uh, you know, endorsement will help. Give him a boost. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, after the Nevada debate, mission not fucking accomplished. Everybody went out to Bloomberg. They got blown the fuck out in Nevada. And nobody did any damage to Bernie Sanders. If you look at Elizabeth Warren, yes, she won up by four, but Bernie Sanders won up by six. Make it make sense. So that's not helping. And I'd also have to point out that 10% is zero delegates. 9% for Pete Buttigieg is zero delegates. Amy Klobuchar, zero delegates. So that's that on that. Um, interesting numbers, though, just to give you guys white versus black. Um, this is one area where people aren't going to get bailed out too much because 
let's let's start off with Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden has 18% white support, 35% black support. So he has twice as much support in the black community that he does in the um in 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 the in the in the um the black white community, sorry. Um, but that support is giving him 25%. So you have Bernie Sanders, who's 26% with white voters, obviously higher 20% with black voters. So now keep in mind the public policy polling had Joe Biden with 50% of the black vote and it had Bernie Sanders with 21% of the black vote. So the numbers for Bernie seem to be a little bit more consistent, right? So Bernie's numbers um, are 20%, 21% in both polls. The difference is Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer in this NBC poll has 19% of the black support. He only has 6% in the other poll. So that's where Joe goes from 36% overall, 36% down to 25% is Tom Steyer. His support with white voters is 10%. Uh, Pete Buttigieg is doing much better with white supporters. He has 17% with white supporters, only 4% with black voters. Uh, Elizabeth Warren has 9% with white supporters, 7% with black voters. So only slightly better there. Amy Klobuchar is, has 9% of black, I mean, of white voters, um, 2% of black voters. 5% of white voters are undecided. 12% of black voters are undecided. So there's a lot less room for white support to grow than it is for black support for some of these candidates to grow. I wonder what they waited for a chance. 12% still undecided, which I wait about. But that's that on that. So people are going to pick which talking points to run with, which polls to run with, how they're going to measure their success. Um, but the but the stakes are high again tomorrow. So the question is, do people again have a Super Tuesday debate strategy? Or do they have a strategy of South Carolina, I need to eke out a delegate or I need to win? Joe Biden, as it happens, it's the same exact strategy, right? Because he has the same competition for um for Super Tuesday as he does for South Carolina, minus Michael Bloomberg. Um, Michael Bloomberg is not a part of South Carolina, but that is a huge, huge impediment for him on Super Tuesday. Elizabeth Warren, all of these people should be going after Bernie Sanders. I've said this every time and nobody does it the way they should. Now, Pete, again, I will give Pete credit because I do honestly believe that Pete was trying to go after Bernie Sanders, but Amy Klobuchar was on his ass. So one thing I think might help Pete out a little bit is I can't imagine Amy Klobuchar not having a bone to pick with Elizabeth Warren. That bang chair, we're going to get a Millie Rock, a Harlem Shake. <laughs> Y'all know Amy was pissed at that debate. Oh my God. Elizabeth Warren, pew, 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 pew. All the whole fucking night chair. And Amy couldn't get her shit off. She couldn't get her rounds off. <laughs> that was sad. I was I was the first writer for Amy. And then the fucked up part about it was after the debate, you know, people were like, oh my God, you know, Elizabeth Warren stood up for Amy Klobuchar. Did she? Because it seemed to me that she was highlighting the fact that Amy Klobuchar forgot who the goddamn president of Mexico is. In the name of solidarity, of course. So... Amy, to me, y'all might think this is sexist, but I feel like she's an emotional debater. She hates Pete, and so she goes after Pete. Now, is there overlap with Pete and her? Obviously, yes. But isn't there more room to go from fucking Joe Biden than Pete Buttigieg? But she never goes after Joe Biden. So how the fuck does that make sense? So I think that that Amy has a score to settle tomorrow, Chad. I think that a couple people are going to blow Elizabeth Warren's head off. Her little Mima goes out the window at. That's only gonna work one time. People are gonna be a little bit more prepared. At least I would hope. Unless these are some stupid motherfuckers to get caught off guard by by Elizabeth Warren taking a fucking gun to everybody 
that they should be prepared to rip Elizabeth Warren's head off. Now, it's only going to be mostly personally satisfying because she doesn't really have the votes to give anybody, if we're being honest. But when has that stopped Amy from ever shooting one? Uh, people should be, I think you want to buy Elizabeth Warren's head off a little bit, but definitely be ready for some defense. Definitely be ready for that. Um, so I think I see Amy going after Liz. Liz is going to be singularly focused on Bloomberg again, because I don't think that she's playing for first place. I think she's playing to run interference for motherfucking Bernie Sanders. Because Bernie Sanders has the votes to give Elizabeth Warren. The top second choice of Bernie Sanders supporters is Elizabeth Warren. If you're trying to fucking win, then why don't you go after Bernie Sanders? So, and another thing that people don't understand either, I know people think, oh, don't go after Bernie Sanders, his supporters are his supporters. I don't agree with that. Okay, but there's another thing, and I'm not saying this is good, but suppression of his support is as effective as conversion because Bernie Sanders relies on a younger uh, electorate, um, a first time electorate bringing in new people. And so people that tend to be a little bit more easily disillusioned. Bernie Sanders understood suppression, understands suppression. Because going back to Operation Block the Black, when everybody had all this energy for Ava, oh my God, don't come for Ava, even though we just going to skip past the whole fucking primary. And since 2017 and 2019, where the Bernie motherfuckers came out to Kamala Harris, okay. But what they fucking understood is that you can suppress the vote for a candidate easier than you can convert a vote for the candidate. Trump understands this. Trust me, Bernie Sanders understands this. And so if you can't get them to join them, at least beat the motherfuckers. I'm not saying that it's necessarily fair, but Bernie sure as fuck doesn't fight fair. So if you can't convince people, hey, you know, I don't have Medicare for all and a bunch of free shit to offer you. But if you can convince people that Bernie Sanders is never going to pass this shit or Bernie Sanders is full of shit, maybe some of his fucking voters stay home. If that makes me awful to say, oh fucking well, because this should be a calculation that you motherfuckers are making. Just like this, the same calculation that fucking Bernie Sanders has made when he's gone after everybody else. Same thing with Elizabeth Warren. That's the calculation that she made when she fucking trashed everybody on stage. So that's that on that. But we'll see. I don't know. I, I don't have any faith in these people to fucking get through their thick head. And then you have the issue of trying to go after Bernie, but flopping. <laughs> Can any of these people land a clean punch? I thought that Bloomberg landed a clean punch on the three houses thing, JL. Bernie sounded very one percenter in his response. And I thought that Pete Buttigieg just land some clean hits. Elizabeth Warren can land some clean hits if she goes after Bernie, but will she? Where is Roland at? I want to know what Roland has to say. Let me go. I'm going to go watch and re recap tonight because I didn't hear that Roland said that Elizabeth Warren should go after Bernie. But I, if he predicts that maybe somebody on her camp is watching and she'll do it. But I don't know if she has that energy for fucking Bernie Sanders unless she wants to catch his ass off guard. I haven't seen it yet. And so, yeah, I think that Bernie's going to go after Joe Biden and Bloomberg. And uh, he probably won't bother with the other people. And we'll see. So I think that tomorrow, is it going to be another bloodbath? I don't know. Don't you think people would want to seem like this much presidential? Because a lot of people seem pretty fucking desperate and unhinged and emotional and just crazy last time. I expect with the CBC co-hosting it, Gail King is one of the moderators from what I read. I could be wrong. I, that To me, I was like, really? I hadn't heard that until I just read that article. But maybe we'll get some more black stuff. And I hope that the black stuff isn't just black people are fucking criminals and we need to let them out of jail because they're all criminals and all black people are so fucking destitute. They're living in hell. Like, please don't fucking do that again. I don't want to see that. Please have some fucking respect. So hopefully we'll get a more substantive debate tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not holding my breath, but I hope that you guys 
got some insight into what the state of South Carolina is, what we can potentially expect from South Carolina, the debate. And we'll see if anybody has any fucking sense on that stage to have a winning strategy, not a second place broker convention strategy, but a, this is my last shot to really make an impact in this race and try to go for broke, go for first place. I'm not saying be a fucking asshole, but I'm just saying really, really hone in your message and stick it to everybody else. So that people think this is the person I need to vote for. We'll see who can accomplish that tomorrow, if anybody.